happy resurrection day this is the day we're celebrating jesus who has risen say it with me he has risen he is alive this is a great day that we're celebrating and we are knowing what jesus has done for you done for me so get your Bibles, get your tablets, your phones. Let's get into God's word on today. I'm so excited. I'm so thankful and so grateful to God who sent his only begotten son for us. Let's get into the word. I'm going to pray. God, we come this day praising and glorifying, magnifying, lifting up your holy name. We thank you for this day. We thank you that you gave your only son to die on the cross for us. We thank Jesus that he did his father's will, that we may be brought back to you, that he made a way that we are righteous before you, took upon all of our sins, Glory be to God. We thank you. We praise you. We thank you for the word that we are going to study on today. And we pray that your Holy Spirit will lead God and direct us into all that we need to know on this day. And we will give you all the praise, the honor, and glory for all that shall be said and all that shall be accomplished through your word on today. In Jesus' name, we pray. Faith kids. Again, I am so happy that you're here tuning in, listening every week. We're going to get into the word on today. We've been talking about the things leading up to the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. On last week, we talked about death on the cross, his burial, when he was crucified on the cross for us, for our sins. And now we're here three days later and he is risen. So let's get into the word on today. Turn into your Bibles to Luke chapter 24. And I'll read our memory scripture for this week. Your memory verse, of course, is Acts chapter 2, verse 32. And it says that God raised Jesus from the dead. And we are all witnesses of this. We are all witnesses that God raised Jesus from the dead and that he is alive. We have by our faith, we're testifying that that is true, that God raised him from the dead. Amen. So in our uh, scriptures for this week, Luke, meditate on that. And so, yes, you are in Luke verse 20, chapter 24. We're going to just start with verse number one and get into our word on today. Of course, we're talking about what? The resurrection. Amen. So let's read. But very early on Sunday morning, the women went to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. This is where they had buried Jesus. They went in, but they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And as they stood there puzzled, two men suddenly appeared to them, clothed in dazzling robes. Who do you think that was, fake kids? Two men just appeared out of nowhere with dazzling clothes on. You know, it was angels. That's what who was there. So it was they appeared before them was angels. So the women were terrified and bowed with their faces to the ground. Then the men asked, "Why are you looking among the dead for someone who is said with me alive? He isn't here." He is risen from the dead. Remember what he told you back in Galilee, that the son of man must be portrayed into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and that he would rise again on the third day. Remember fake kids, Holy Spirit brings all things to our remembrance to your remembrance to my remembrance that's that's his, one of his jobs he's bring those things back to our remembrance so as the women the angels were speaking to the to the women 
the Holy Spirit brought it back to their remembrance. Then they remembered that he had said this. So it was like, like a playback. You know how we can record something and, and rewind it and go back? It was like a playback for them that they remember. Okay, I remember Jesus said that. He said that he was going to be crucified. He said, but in three days, I will be lifted up again. They did not understand it. But now it's like, you know, maybe something your parents had told you, you didn't know, you didn't understand it. And then in the midst of it, you'd be like, oh yeah, I remember mama said that. Then you have a better understanding. So that's what they were doing. They was like, okay, yeah, I remember Jesus saying that. Let's keep reading. And so they rushed back from the tomb to tell his 11 disciples and everyone else what had happened. All right, so they went back. They was like, oh, we went to the tomb and guess what? Jesus was not there. He is just like he told us. Do y'all remember? He told us he was going to be risen and he was going to get up on the third day and he has risen. So let's keep reading. Let's go down to verse 11. It says, but the story sounded like nonsense to the men. So they didn't believe it. However, there's Peter. I like Peter. He's always like, okay, okay, let me go. Let me find out. So Peter jumped up and ran to the tomb to look. Uh, snooping, he peered into in and saw the empty linen wrappings. Then he went home again and wondering what had happened. So Peter went to the tomb and of course, what? Jesus was not there. So that same day, two of Jesus' followers were walking in the village of Emmaus, seven miles from out of Jerusalem. So as they walked along, they were talking about everything that was going on. You know, what was happening that they killed Jesus, they crucified him, they buried him, you know, so they were saying everything that was going on. And as they walked and discussed these things, Jesus himself suddenly came and began walking with them. But God kept them from recognizing him. So because they were followers of Jesus, they would recognize him. You would know someone you've been with, right? So God hid them for a minute, you know, let them not recognize Jesus. So he asked them, what are you discussing so intently as you walk along? So they start, stopped short in sadness and was written and was telling them everything that was going on. Don't you know they killed Jesus and he, they was telling all them, telling Jesus all of these things about himself. And so Jesus says, what things? So Jesus asked, the things that happened to Jesus, the man from Nazareth, they said, and they went on to keep telling Jesus about what was going on. And we thought he was the Messiah. We hoped that he was going to be the one who was going to save us and all of these things that they're telling Jesus. And now the women said he went to the tomb and he was not there, that his body is missing and that he's risen. So let's continue to read. So then Jesus said to them, you foolish people, you find it so hard to believe all that the prophets wrote in the scriptures. He said it has been in the scriptures that this was going to happen to Jesus. Even Pastor Stan said, if you watched a uh, um, Bible study uh, midweek service or last week, he was telling us that the scriptures was telling Jesus about himself. He, so he was like, it's been written. It's, you've been reading the same scriptures that this was going to happen. So wasn't it clear and predicted that the Messiah would have to suffer all of these things? So then Jesus took them through the writings of Moses. And so he started telling them through the scriptures, what the scripture said about what was going to happen and the things that was going to go happen to him. So keep on. By this time, they were nearing Emos and the end of their journey. So Jesus acted as if he was going on, but they begged him to stay the night and come on, look, come on with us, sir, and come to our house and we'll have a meal. So as they sat down to eat, he took the bread, Jesus, and blessed it. Then he broke it and gave it to them. And as Jesus took the bread and broke it and gave it to them, they was like, this is Jesus. This is him. He is alive. He is risen. And then at that moment, Jesus left them. So they said to us, each other, didn't our hearts burn when he told us the scriptures, when he laid out the word of God to us? And then so we remember, okay, yeah, that's right. Jesus was saying that. And so let's read on. And within the hour, they were on their way back to Jerusalem. And so they're going and they're telling the disciples everything that was going on and what happened. So then Jesus appears 
to his disciples, the, the ones who were with him. I can just imagine when they saw Jesus. So he appeared to them. I'm down in uh, verse number 36. And just as they were telling about Jesus himself, suddenly standing there among them, Jesus says, peace be with you. But the whole group was startled and frightened thinking they were seeing a ghost. Okay, remember this when he was on the water, but they've been with Jesus. They should know he is not a ghost. Look at my hands. Look at my feet. You can see that it's really me. Touch me and make sure that I am not a ghost because ghosts do not have bodies as you see that I do. And as he spoke, he showed them his hands and his feet and still they stood there in disbelief. So they was like, I don't know. But on and on, and Jesus asked for something to eat. And then he said, when I was with you before, I told you that everything written in the scriptures, Moses said in the laws and in the prophets and in Psalms must be fulfilled. Again, bringing all things back to our members, the scriptures, the word of God. That's why we meditate and read the word of God because everything is in the scriptures that we're supposed to be doing that we should be doing. That's why we read the word of God. That's why you have your memory verse, fake kids. And he said, yes, it was written long ago that the Messiah would suffer and die and rise from the dead on the third day. And it was also then that this Messiah will be proclaimed in, in the authority of his name into all generations. And now I will send the Holy Spirit just as my father promised, but stay here in the city. So he told the disciples that I'm, I'm going to my father, but I'm not the Holy Spirit, but stay here until the Holy Spirit comes. And so let's continue. I'm in verse 50. Then Jesus led them to Bethany and lifting his hands to heaven, he blessed them. Before he left, going up to ascend to the Father, Jesus blessed them. And that's so awesome because we're studying and we're learning about the blessings of the Lord and that even Jesus, before he left his disciples, he did not leave them without blessing them. So he went up to heaven, but he pronounced the blessing upon them before he left so that they can go out and preach the good news of the gospel to all the world as we too are to do. Go out and preach the gospel to the world, telling others that Jesus died on the cross for our sins, that he rose again on the third day. And not only that, that he had the victory of sin and death. We were brought back into right standing with the Father because He died on the cross, that He took all of our sins, not that He sinned, He took our sins so that we can be children, come back to the Father, that we will be in right standing with the Father. Let me read, I'm going over to Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, you can just stay, you don't have to turn there. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I'm going to read quickly verse 55. And it says, O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? For sin is the sting that results in death, and the law gives us sin its power. But thank God he gives us victory over sin and death through the our lord jesus christ so we have the victory over sin and death because jesus died on the cross for it so now we have victory so my dear brothers and sisters as it's reading be strong and unmovable that we're always doing what god says because why we have the victory faith kids because of what jesus did I hope you have got something out this message on today that because Jesus gave his life for us, died on the cross, took sin, our sins from us that we don't deserve, but he did it. And because he did, we now have eternal life in him. When we accept him as our Lord and our saviors, we have victory. Satan has no power anymore we have our eternal life in him and we're going to tell others 
about Jesus. We're going to not just keep it to ourselves. Remember, we had that message, tell somebody, because we can't. We want others to know that Jesus loves them, how much God loves them because he sent Jesus and how Jesus has taken and brought us back to our Father. Faith kids, have a blessed Resurrection Day on today and a great week this week. Remember, let me bless you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his face upon you and give you peace. Have a blessed week, faith kids. Bye.